Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at what is pretty much considered one of the biggest updates ever released by the Yuzu development team. What I'm speaking about is their brand new release of their Vulkan API backend, which has massively boosted the performance of dozens, if not hundreds of games for both Nvidia AMD and Intel GPU users. This brand new Vulkan backend is currently only available through Yuzu's brand new build structure titled Yuzu Early Access, which are currently only available to Yuzu's supporters over on Patreon. This new build system was implemented to stop any confusion between users using older Patreon builds for extended periods of time, also offering those supporters and Early Access members much, much easier access access to these builds through the already existing installer. Now as always with any of these Patreon changes and in respect to the Vulkan API, it is of course going to be added to the free mainline version of Yuzu in the coming days and weeks. As far as I know, they are going to try to get Vulkan merged into Yuzu mainline before December 25th as a kind of a Christmas gift to everyone in the community. But again, as usual, they are only going to merge it to Yuzu mainline once the code is stable and properly tested. The gameplay footage you have been watching thus far is in fact of Yuzu's early access build, I believe this is Yuzu early access 56, in which The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening is now not only fully playable, but also absolutely perfectly rendered on this new Vulkan backend. These performance improvements can be seen in many, many games, especially so if you are an AMD or Intel GPU user. And on top of this, many other games, similarly to The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, have seen many graphical enhancements and rendering improvements. Now, I know that many of you are only going to be interested in the performance numbers we're going to be seeing from Vulkan in comparison to the older OpenGL backend. So let's take a look at some performance numbers in a graph form right now. To start things off, let's take a look at the performance differences we're going to be seeing on AMD GPUs. In this benchmark, I tested using my 3700X, my AMD RX 580 4GB and 16GB of RAM. Starting things off, we have Super Mario Odyssey which has jumped from a minuscule 7 frames per second on OpenGL up to an average of 45 frames per second. These average frame rates were taken from benchmark runs through a cap, sand and Cascade Kingdom. Moving on to Pokemon, let's go. We are in fact running a small bit slower on the Vulkan API. When I asked Rodrigo, one of the developers responsible for creating this Vulkan backend, he told me that these performance differences and lower performance on Vulkan is caused by the actual way in which Pokemon Let's Go and Pokemon Sword and Shield are made. So at least in respect to performance in those games, we are going to have to wait a little bit longer for added performance via Vulkan. Regardless of that, it's Still super impressive to see the differentials in performance in Super Mario Odyssey, Super Mario Maker 2, Zelda Breath of the Wild, Link's Awakening and Fire Emblem Three Houses, all of which are very very popular games on Yuzu. Next up, let's take a look at some Nvidia performance numbers where unfortunately again we are seeing lower performance in some circumstances when using an Nvidia GPU. Now before I go too much further and before you get too disheartened by these performance numbers you're seeing on Nvidia GPUs, let's just take a quick look at this. So on the left we're going to be seeing OpenGL and on the right we're going to be looking at Vulkan. This test is to show you that performance is not the only defining factor in why the Vulkan API is so important for Yuzu. Let's just play the video footage now. So what we're going to be doing is taking a quick run through Sand Kingdom, both of these APIs having no shader caches at all. As you can see, on our left hand side, it has taken us 9 seconds to compile the initial shaders from doing a simple ground pound, something you do in the game constantly. Vulkan was literal milliseconds in compiling those shaders and just by watching raw gameplay footage completely unedited you can see how much smoother the Vulkan API is in gameplay. Again, something I want you to pay attention to in Vulkan is the amount of time it takes to catch these shaders from capturing this Goomba, we throw the hat, capture it, 
Once we leave again, we're going to get more stutter. It took about a second to compile it that time. Now let's see how long it takes on OpenGL. Again, we're just going to approach the ruins. We're going to approach the exact same Goomba. And no, in case you're wondering, I have not edited this footage at all. This is just how long it takes for OpenGL shaders to compile on NVIDIA. This, remember, is the best case scenario for OpenGL. And I believe at this point, it's pretty obvious that the advantages of Vulkan are not just sheer performance numbers. For the most part, and in my own honest opinion, I believe that Vulkan is a far, far better experience in pretty much any game in which it's currently supported, delivering a much, much more playable and smooth game play experience over anything we've ever had in this emulator before. On top of this increase to smoothness, check this out, in Super Mario Odyssey, the Vulcan API has also completely fixed all of the physics interaction, meaning that not only is fog physics interaction now fully working and reacting with both Mario and Cappy, but we also have a correct interaction between water and Mario or Cappy's character model. For specific parts of the game, this is in fact quite important, just like this sub-area in Mushroom Kingdom, where before we would have absolutely no interaction between Mario and any of these clouds, meaning that any sub-areas like this one that require any kind of physics interaction to work are now also going to be fully playable, at least in a much more enjoyable fashion than they were before. On a personal note, this lack of physics interaction is something that really, really annoyed me for a long time so I am super happy to see it now fully functional on the emulator. In respect to the performance graphs I showed previously, as with AMD GPUs, we are also getting a slightly lower performance in Pokemon Let's Go and Pokemon Sword and Shield on the Vulkan API on NVIDIA GPUs. And on top of this, I also want to make note that if you do want to test out Pokemon Sword or Fire Emblem Three Houses, a game in which we did see a performance bump on Vulkan, you are going to be required to use the Vulkan beta driver which is available from NVIDIA's website. Okay, so now that we've taken a look at AMD and NVIDIA performance, let's take a look at some Intel iGPU numbers. A big thank you to Morph for carrying out these benchmarks on his laptop. Again, the system specification used are an i7-8559U, an Intel Iris Plus 655 and 16GB of RAM. To be honest, these performance numbers, while they are lower than what we were seeing on NVIDIA and AMD GPUs, are some of the most promising numbers we've seen out of all of our benchmarks. The only instance in which he saw lower performance on Vulkan versus OpenGL was, as you can see, in The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, and by his own admission, the only reason he saw lower performance in that game is because he is severely GPU bottlenecked by his iGPU. Regardless, they are still very impressive numbers, especially so with the increases seen in the likes of Super Mario Odyssey, Pokemon Let's Go, and Super Mario Maker. And when we pair these performance improvements with the smoothness we've seen in shader compilation, the future looks super, super bright for Vulcan. Okay, so now that we've taken a look at all of the performance numbers, let's take a look at some improved game compatibility and even more render improvements. Right here, for example, in Fire Emblem Three Houses, we now have correctly rendered lava, the shadows are no longer completely broken, and unlike before where I was only able to get about 14 or 15 frames per second in this particular battle scene, I am now getting 30 frames per second and higher. Another game that has seen a lot of rendering improvements, I'm going to call them, and also a very nice little bump in performance, is Luigi's Mansion 3, again when running on Vulcan. Now, while I'm not going to call this anywhere close to fully playable or playable at all, it is nice to see that its performance has improved, its beam and part of its lighting is now properly rendered. All that remains to be fixed is the fact that it crashes when you use asynchronous GPU emulation, it for some reason crashes when you have NVIDIA threaded optimization turned on which shouldn't even be affecting Vulkan at all, and on top of this you need to have NVIDIA's Vulkan beta driver or AMD's custom beta driver installed for this game to be functional. Again, another game that has seen a big improvement in its render quality at least is Pokemon Sword, 
While its performance is lower on Vulkan versus OpenGL, it does have a big improvement in graphical quality, its rendering of shadows, and its lighting in general. Again, on top of all of those changes to its graphical fidelity, we also have the fact that when using any moves, like this waterfall move from my Gyarados, there is practically no shader cache compilation stutter, something that is a godsend considering what we had to put up with in the past with OpenGL in the likes of Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. That's not to say that Vulcan is perfect, it is by no means complete, it's still in a very, very experimental stage, but since we now have our hands on with it, we can report all of its issues and hopefully get them fixed in future. As always, if there are any games at all that you want me to test out on Yuzu's Vulcan backend or even compare it to OpenGL, please do let me know down below in the comments section and if I have that game or the ability to test it, I will do so for you absolutely no problem at all. As always, if you wish to support Yuzu's development and get access to these early access releases, all you need to do is head over to their Patreon page, support them, and then link your Patreon account to your Citra or Yuzu account on their forums. Instructions on how to do any of that can be found down below. For now though, at least, that is going to be it for this video. Hopefully everything I've shown you has accurately demonstrated the benefits of the Vulkan API on Yuzu, and as always, as compatibility and performance improves in future, I will be sure to let you guys know as soon as I possibly can. Once again, if you enjoyed this video, remember to hit the like button down below, hit the subscribe button if you enjoy these kinds of videos, and if you're already subscribed, make sure to hit the bell icon so that you get notified as soon as I make a new video upload. Once again guys, thank you all very much for watching, have a great day, and I will see you in the next one.